Hey, what's up guys? Thanks for coming back for yet another video. Sorry it's been a while, uh, but we're back. And baseball season's over and we're rocking and rolling now. Today we're looking at a Troy built pressure washer. Uh, it's a little bit beefier than a normal residential pressure washer. I would not consider this to be a commercial pressure washer, but it is a little bit bigger than your average. It's kind of got these beefier tires. Um, you know, it's just so it seems a little bit more solid than, you know, just kind of average little one that you buy at Home Depot or Lowe's. This one was probably bought at a big box store, but it just seems a little bit bigger. This machine is not owned by me. It's uh, my dad's buddy I took it to a shop. I'm assuming the carburetor is just all gummed up or something because it sat for a while, but uh, it'd be like four weeks for them to take a look at it. And so he was talking to my dad and my dad was like, hey, let me drop it off with my son. He might be able to take a look at it for you. So hopefully this is, you know, just a routine, straightforward thing. I assume it will be. And, uh, you know, we'll see if it comes back to life. All right, so here it is. It's a Troy built 2700 PSI, uh, two, 2.3 gallons per minute. It's pretty standard power washer statistics machine. Customer stated that they, uh, they just, I, I don't know how long it was sitting or what the time frame was, but yeah, just went to start it up. We're in the spring right now, so I'm assuming it sat over the winter, had some crappy fuel in it, and now here we are. It's got an on-off switch. Um, I think this air filter, yeah. It's got one of those styrofoam air filters. E. There's a lot of, a lot of chaos in there with lubricants. But anyways, I, I think it's just bad fuel. Um, I won't drag this intro out much longer than I already have, so we'll just get a little bit of fuel dumped in there. I am not under the impression that it lost spark or that there's something wrong with the pump or anything else like that. So let me just get a little fuel down there. We'll pull it over and we will see what happens. Um, I did pull it over before I popped the camera on and it felt like it had compression. So let's get some dyno juice down there and we'll figure out if, uh, if it's going to kick over for us. And from there it's just a carburetor issue. All right, in you go. It's got one of those like auto choke systems. I don't really like, I'm not a huge fan of those, but whatever. All right, here we go. All right. Switch on, get that garage door opened up. Let's see if it fires. Okay, cool. I know that, um, Sometimes it's not good for these to run, even if it's just for a few seconds without water going through that pump, it'll uh, it'll dry it out pretty quick or burn it out pretty quick. I mean, that's probably fine, but uh, you don't really wanna do it much longer than that is the point. All right, up on the bench, you can kind of start disassembling this carb system. Screw up here. I think this switch, this kill switch is attached to this in some way. Ah, that's the, that's the way. All right, there's just a breather tube on the back of this and then these kill wires. Um, red wire is closest to the yellow. I don't really know if it matters, but just remember that red wire is closest to the yellow on the two prongs, red wire, black wire. You can see some, uh, some of that gas coloration right there. It's not normal gas color, which is kind of like a light green. That is like a very, uh, very dark, kind of like murky color. I'm actually out of paper towels. I don't have any paper towels. I have to purge that fuel system, which I, I don't know if that is good fuel or not it smells okay just there might be water that has collected so let's drain a little bit out and let's just assess as we go I might leave all of that fuel in there pinch off the fuel line with those if I, if I have to but let's get a little fuel drained out and we'll just kind of see what it's given us I'm assuming everything if there is water or 
you know, whatever is going on in the car, well, especially water, because water is heavier than fuel. Eventually, it will make its way to the lowest point, either in the gas tank or most of the time in the bowl of the carburetor. So that's why, you know, you have things that sit, collect moisture, moisture makes its way to the bottom most point, and they don't want to start, and so on and so forth. So, e actually doesn't look too bad. Yeah, you can probably see it's. I mean, it's not. It's not perfect. Definitely not bad. Uh, that looks like a Torx 40 T45. Way too big. All right, my original guess was a T40. So let's just see. No. Well, I don't have a T35, so hopefully it's a T30. Uh, that's good enough. Was that so hard on there? Let's do this. I need my needles. Okay, so that we'll just set that off to the side. So we'll take that guy off, and that one on the choke, and then that one there. Okay, good. All right, let's get this big honking thing off the bench, and then we will carry on. All right, this is probably the dirtiest rag that I could ever use to lay everything out on, but uh, I think it's really all we got right now. It really doesn't look too bad. It doesn't need much to stop it from running, but I have, I've definitely seen way worse. Usually on these, there's no more removable pilot jets or pilot screws or anything like that. This main jet is usually pressed in there pretty well. I'm gonna, I always try to remove it and like literally every single one of them is very difficult to remove. So I'll usually just give it some little effort, and if it doesn't, I don't even know. I don't think this one would ever come out. No, it won't. We'll just leave it. All right, I, I heated up the ultrasonic cleaner, but I think that we're gonna go, we're just gonna go in the carb, carb spray direction. I don't think I'm gonna go through the whole mess of getting it through the ultrasonic cleaner or putting it through, even if it's just for a few minutes. I, I think that all, all we really need is just some uh, good old fashioned carb spray. And then this main jet, AKA the bowl nut in this situation, uh, we can get that out there too. Okay, I would say that's good. Uh, no, no water came out of that carburetor, at least none that I can see. All right, we're good. That cleaned up nicely. Uh, again, no ultrasonic cleaner, didn't think it was needed. It looks, looks pretty, pretty good. Uh, all right, it is, come on smartwatch, let's go, let's go. There we go. Uh, it is 10.18. I cannot start it up tonight. It is dark outside. It is a Sunday night, so I am gonna get this all back together. I'm debating whether or not I wanna purge the rest of that gas tank. It's so, um, it's so little, such a little gas tank, right? If it was like five gallons, I'd probably leave it. But uh, I mean, it's, it's probably like a, a quarter of a gallon or, um, you know, a quart. I guess it would be a quarter of a gallon. Is that why they call it a quart? It's because it's a quarter gallon. Wow, I never thought about that. Oh gosh, I might edit that out. Yeah, let me get the thing back up here and we'll, we'll uh, look at that fuel tank and just kind of debate if we wanna purge the rest of the fuel out or not. Um, I suppose while I'm up here too, I can get this, all this stuff kind of wiped out too. I'll do that off camera. No, no need to watch, it is very boring. Okay, so what my plan with the fuel system is I have this cup cleaned out nice and, uh, nice and bright and I'm just gonna do, I don't know, maybe another eight ounces and then make uh, make an assessment on it. It's, it's oh gosh, it's a little dark. It's not the worst I've ever seen, but it's 
smells kind of middle. Okay, I'll purge it all out and then I'll bring you guys back when uh, when that's complete. Here, let me bump, let me bump that down. You know what I mean? It's 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 not bad. It's just not very good. It's only a couple bucks worth, I guess. Get that carburetor back on there now. So this is the choke, the auto choke. I can kind of explain that auto choke in a minute. Um, Okay, good there, good there. The way that this auto choke works, if you ever see like, these guys call it ready start, um, auto choke. Uh, I think auto choke is pretty universal. I don't think anybody trademarked auto choke, but essentially what it does, there's a, you know, a choke lever, right? This right here. And this is connected to, um, if you hear that like squeakiness, there's a spring loaded coil on the other side that is like, I think it's on the muffler. It's bolted to the muffler. When that muffler heats up, um, that spring starts to uh, expand, right? Heat makes it expand and um, it pulls that choke open. I, I wanna say it's like 90 seconds to two minutes. And then if you ever look, I think there's videos out there on YouTube. Um, and if there's not, I mean, I, I've seen one. I don't know if there's any specifics, but I'll show you you can watch like a time lapse, right, of that choke plate, a two minute time lapse, and it just goes like that over, you know, the course of two minutes and uh, and opens up. So kind of cool, kind of gimmicky to me for some reason. I, I just don't know why you can't just, you know, be more in control of like, all right, choke, start, feather it halfway off. It, you know, only takes a minute. Um, not even a minute in some cases, but, you know, I get it. They wanna, they wanna make it easier for the operator. Red goes closer to the yellow on that side. All right, breather tube is on. Okay guys, it's the next day. There are uh, no evident leaks or anything like that coming out of the uh, carburetor or just anywhere in that area. Um, I did forget to check the oil, so before we fire this up and get it going, uh, I do wanna just take a quick peek and see what's going on inside of there. got a good level it's almost full a little bit dirty so you know no uh no issues there i might might change it i think it only holds like half a quart or something like that all right let's take it outside and see how it does all right here we go Guys, cool. That worked out. Uh, worked out nicely. It's um, you know, good little machine. Um, I am still going to change the oil. 
probably just tip it over. And then I think uh, this one should be good. All right, let's get some oil in there. I just got a 10W30. I'm just gonna do like, and we'll start with like a half a quart maybe. Perfect, 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 right to the top. All right guys, that's gonna do it for this one. Thank you so much for joining. Luckily, this was just a pretty straightforward, as anticipated, repair. I typed up an invoice to him, it was 75 bucks, probably an hour, plus or minus, of my time. I think that's fairly common for small engine repairs. Uh, comment below, what's a, what's a normal rate? I, I usually don't do much like service work, it's more so, um, you know, just buy it, take on the, the risk of owning it, and then sell it flip it or whatever. So if you like the video, hit that thumbs up button. You can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, uh, at ChrisXOutdoors. Give me a follow there. Say hello. Let me know what you're working on. And until the next one, peace.